This is Porja Nusen of the Department of English, Sonata Degree College, Darjeeling, once again. And today I'm going to talk about a play, um, Ritchakatika or The Little Clay Cart by Shudraka. And this play is part of your core course 3 and this lecture which is being hosted by Radio Salesian 90.8 FM is intended for the second semester English Honours students. Okay. Now, the Sanskrit play Mrichakatika, translated into English as The Little Clay Cart, it's a 10-act play which is attributed to a Kshatriya king called Sudraka or Shudraka, S-U-D-R-A-K-A, who belonged to the 5th century common era. Okay. This play is set in the ancient city of Ujjaini during the reign of King Palaka near the end of the Pradyota dynasty, which is the first quarter of the 5th century BCE. So there is clearly a almost a thousand year gap between the time that the play was written and the time period in which the play is based okay it's based is in five in fifth in the fifth century bce and it's being written in the fifth century ce common era okay and Sudraka uh, is, uh, is a very well-known sort of, uh, not much is known about the playwright uh, at all, but uh, his only sort of extant play which can be found is uh, Mrichakatika and he's often named along with the other playwrights of classical India such as Kalidasa and Bhavabhuti. Okay, so uh, the play is about the romance between an, an impoverished Brahmin by the name of Charudatta and a courtesan called Vasantasena. Okay, um, the courtesan, the word courtesan is of course, uh, it's, it's an English translation. The Sanskrit term would be Nagarvadu. Okay, now who were the Nagarvadhus? The Nagarvadhus, uh, translated as bride of the city, they referred to public women in ancient India. Now who was the public woman? Like unlike the woman who belonged within the house, who was the married wife, okay, was the, uh, the, the, the wife, the mother, etc. The public woman or the courtesan or the prostitute, she was a woman who was highly respected and highly esteemed in society, okay. She was trained in all the arts the art of singing the art of dancing the art of the art of love making and all of that and she was someone who was highly respected and commanded a lot of respect in society okay and people would have to pay a lot of money in order to listen to her sing and dance and also to be able to spend one night with the Nagarvadhu, okay. Nagarvadhu, bride of the city, okay. Now, famous Nagarvadhus in classical India, and Vasantasena is a real life character, mind you. Famous Nagarvadhus of ancient India are, you may have heard of the name Amrapali, who became one of Buddha's famous disciples, uh, who belonged to the city. She was, she became an Arahant later. She was a courtesan or a Nagarvadhu belonging to the city of Vaishali, who became an Arahant later, and she was one of Buddha's disciples, and of course, Vasantasena. Now, these two are famous examples of Nagarvadhus from classical India. Okay. Now, this particular play, Mrichakatika or the little clay cart, it sort of deviates from the tradition of the Natya Shastra. Okay. Now, what is the Natya Shastra? You may have heard of Aristotle's poetics, which you have covered in your, uh, which you have, may have uh, covered in your last semester. Aristotle's poetics, it outlines the formula or the norms of tragedy in classical Greece okay and the Natya Shastra is its Indian counterpart if I may so call it it is written by someone called Bharata Muni between circa 200 BC to 200 CE common era and uh, it outlines similarly in, in a similar fashion to the Aristotle's poetics it outlines the sort of uh, the ways or the traditions or the formula of Indian classical drama. Okay. Now, one of the things that the Natya Shastra states is that a Natak or a play, a Sanskrit play, must base itself uh, on the life of the nobility. Okay. Now, this particular play, Mrichakatika, unlike Kalidasa's Sakuntala, Shakuntala, for instance, which you also have in your syllabus, uh, unlike Kalidasa's Shakuntala, this particular play deviates from a tradition, this particular tradition of the Natya Shastra, in that it shows characters who do not belong to the nobility. For example, I spoke about Charudatta. Charudatta, although he's born a Brahmin, he's of high caste, he does not belong to the nobility at all. Similarly, Vasantasena, she's a courtesan, she's a uh, Nagarvadhu, and she is also not a member of the nobility. The play also 
uh, has minor characters such as thieves and gamblers etc none of whom belong to the nobility so the play is showing you the life of the common people of classical india another thing to note about the play is that it is also unlike kalidasa's shakuntala for instance this play is far more cosmopolitan in character now what do i mean when i say cosmopolitan the play has it's primarily written in sanskrit yes but only a few characters of the play they actually speak sanskrit okay sanskrit as you know was the language of the clerics or the brahmin clerics in ancient india okay so only a few characters such as charudatta the courtier aryaka sarvilaka and the character of the judge they speak sanskrit in the play all the other characters including vasantasena they're speaking in prakrit now prakrit is the vernacular prakrit is a group of dialects prakrit does not refer to one particular language but it refers to the vernacular language from for example when i say english and the vernacular i the vernacular may refer to nepali bengali uriya marathi any any a group of languages so prakrit refers to a group of languages a group of vernacular languages one of the famous languages prakrit languages of course was pali okay so the other characters including vasantasena they do not speak in sanskrit but they all speak in prakrit and the play as i told you it shows a range of characters uh, most of whom are commoners okay and also it has it it is not just it is although it is written in sanskrit it contains a set of languages okay uh, it contains sanskrit dialogues in sanskrit is also contains dialogue in prakrit okay so in this way the play is far more cosmopolitan in character than kalidasa shakuntala which is completely in sanskrit okay now uh, one of uh, the modern adaptations of the play is uh, Ger- Gerard D Norval's French adaptation which is uh, entitled La Chariot d'Enfant which was written which was uh, performed in 1850 so this is one of the one of the few classical indian plays which has been revived again and again particularly for the european audience so one of the famous adaptations is the french adaptations of 1850 by gerard d norval and it's called lo sharia don fant you can google and look look this up and this play was first translated into english in 1905 by arthur w rider and it was named as the little clay cart so this is the translation which you have in your syllabus okay the play also is part of uh, it it became a uh, a very famous film uh, the film is not called mrichakatika it's called utsav the film was <coughs> directed written and directed adapted and directed by a famous marathi playwright girish karnad and it's uh, it was it was uh, the play the film was shot it premiered in 1984 the film has rekha uh, i'm sure you all are familiar with the actress rekha she is vasant sena shekhar suman is charudatta and shashi kapoor plays the role of the i'll be talking about him he's the role of the he plays the role of the antagonist or the villain samsthanaka okay also another thing to remember about this play is that it does not base its plot uh, on stories from the epics indian epics or the indian mythologies and instead as i've told you it bases its plot uh, in the common life of ancient india and the life of the commoners of ancient india okay quickly the main characters of the play are charudatta vasantasena maitreya who is another poor brahmin and he's a friend of charudatta there is vardhamanaka who is charudatta's servant um, there is madanika an important character madanika is vasantasena's most important maid and confidant okay uh, she's also a slave she is a uh, she is held bond bondage by uh, she is bonded to uh, vasantasena okay she has a lover her lover's name is sharvilaka and sharvilaka he also presents a foil or a contrast to the character of charudatta in this play you will see how sharvilaka he becomes a thief in order to secure the freedom of his lover madanika okay and he presents a foil to the character of charudatta in the play okay There is of course the main antagonist or the main villain in the play his samsthanaka he is also known as shakara he is a brother of king palaka's concubine concubine means mistress um this play also shows you uh, a change of regime a transformation a, a transformation or a change in uh, kingship or a change of regimes there is this prince called aryaka who has been sent to exile and the play will end with aryaka deposing the ruler palaka and assuming the throne okay ancient india was very, was very different from british india or modern india in the sense that ancient india comprised a set of warring kingdoms okay and uh, fights over kingship you know was very common a uh, kingship was definitely it was uh, hereditary but at the same time you know 
kings could easily be deposed and dethroned and others could also assume the throne okay so samsthana ka he is presently ruling in place of uh, king palaka but you will see that at the end of the play king palaka will be deposed and he will be succeeded by aryaka who has been now sent to exile okay um there is as i've mentioned sarvilaka who is madanika's lover and there is also a minor character but an important character he is the masior the person who massages or the shampooer of charudatta who will become a buddhist monk and he will save J- J- vasantasena from the point of death okay he'll become he's a minor character but he's an important character who saves vasantasena after she's left for dead i will discuss the story in greater detail in my next lecture okay there are also minor characters such as the judge the executioners etc okay it's a 10 act play there is the prologue and the prologue contains an eulogy or a self praise by the playwright shudraka okay he's praising himself in the prologue and there then there are 10 acts i will name the acts for you act 1 is entitled the gems are left behind act 2 the shampooer who gambled act 3 the hole in the wall act 4 madanika and sharvilaka act 5 the storm act 6 the swapping of the bullock carts act 7 aryaka's escape act 8 the strangling of vasantasena act 9 the trial and act 10 the end uh, followed by an epilogue okay now uh, very briefly i'll be discussing the plot in much greater detail in my next lecture but very briefly you see i've already told you that this play is about the uh affair between an impoverished brahmin charudatta and the nagarvadhu uh, who is a real life character called vasantasena okay now vasantasena she is a very famous courtesan of nagarvadhu and she's pursued by samsthanaka who is ruling in place of king palaka okay so samsthanaka desires vasantasena but vasantasena is not in love with him she loves charudatta okay and uh, you see that Uh, there is a small controversy there's a misunderstanding which happens in that vasantasena comes to spend one night with charudatta and charudatta's son rohasena he has a little uh, that is where the name comes from the name of the play the little clay cart he has a small clay cart and because he's a poor brahmin he's a son of a poor brahmin rohasena he does not have good toys so vasantasena what does she do she gives her jewels in order to make the clay cart look like a golden cart she covers it with her jewels okay and then what happens she is tricked by some sthanaka she is strangled and left for dead okay and then uh, some sthanaka he frames charudatta for the murder of vasantasena okay of course vasantasena does not die she is found and revived by the buddhist monk by the shampooer the masio turned buddhist monk and at the end of the play you see that uh, charudatta is sentenced to death and he is about to be hanged but right at the crucial moment vasantasena intervenes she comes accompanied by the buddhist monk and charudatta is spared his life is spared and he's allowed his love affair with vasantasena is allowed to reach fruition okay uh, also uh, samsthanaka's evil deed is found out discovered and he along with king palaka they are both deposed and aryaka he comes to power and assumes the throne a pardon is granted to charudatta and he becomes a member of the court okay so this is the main story line and re- remember the important themes it's a cosmopolitan play i've already told you that and also remember that the play deviates from the natya shastra in so much that it does not only talk about the lives of the nobility but it talks about the lives of the commoners or the common people also the play although it is written in sanskrit it the dialogues are both in sanskrit as well as in prakrit okay so these are a few points to remember about Shudraka's play and in my next lecture I'll be talking about the storyline and the plot in greater detail and I'll be discussing some of the major themes and characters in the play thank you